Ready, set, push! The block pushing event has come again, and once more the competitors sacrifice their bodies in pursuit of glory, literally hurling themselves against solid blocks to earn admiration and, hopefully, the gold medal. This is The Marble Report. This year's rendition widened the push lanes, which added a new dimension of precision to the event. Any competitors not aimed squarely down the track would inevitably end up swaying side to side on exit, a disastrous waste of pushing power. Block pushing requires, above all, cooperation and communication. A team that rolls in perfect precision will always beat the raw force of an uncoordinated team. Why is that the case? Let's take a look at the physics behind the sport. We all learned about transference of momentum in the Newton's Cradle event, and the same rules are all in play here. The lead marble acts as the transfer point for the team's momentum into the block. So while the lead may get the block moving initially, it's when the rest of the team comes in that determines the strength of the push. Fortunately, there is one simple rule that can tell us how to judge a competitor's run. Every second rolling on the end track while not pushing the block is a waste of energy. Simply put, less pushing equals a lower score. You've all heard the wise words of Greg Woods, who tells us that teams that stick close together do better, but what you probably didn't know is that some gaps are worse than others. So your lead marble pushes right up against the block, the two of them moving in tandem along the track. But the second marble has broken away from the rest of the team, and strikes the leader before the others can arrive. This pushes the block ahead of the crew, momentum flowing from marble 2, through marble 1, and into the block. Now before the pair can catch back up to the block, in comes the rest of the team. But instead of all their momentum being channeled directly into the block, it instead pushes through marble 2 and into marble 1, who rockets away from the rest of the team. He hits the block on his own, without the full force of his team behind him. This is exactly what the once powerful Minty Maniacs did. Let's take a look at their run. You can see that once they hit the end track, everything falls apart. Marbles jostling around, no one is getting a good direct hit on the block. So much energy wasted on knocking teammates into each other. Really, it's quite sad to watch. Let's imagine how this could have been improved. If the whole team had managed to stay perfectly together, the full force of all four marbles would be transferred into the block, optimizing the amount of energy conserved. There would not be a single moment of marbles' energy not being directly applied to the block. Perfection! So here's the fun part. Suppose the leader makes a break for it, just completely tears away from the rest of the team. While not ideal, it's far better than any other large split developing. Why? When the leader arrives, he stays tight to the block, providing an initial push. Then as long as the rest of the team stays tight, they are still able to channel the combined power of three marbles through the leader and into the block. So with all that in mind, let's have a look at how the competitors fared. As usual, we'll start with the worst performances of the day. And my how the Minty Maniacs have fallen from grace. Despite their explosive start to the season, they've slowly let complacency creep in. But we've already picked apart their run, so let's move on to the Hazers. From their massive gaps to their partial launching of the block, nothing about either of their runs displayed anything less than incompetence. The team has been a bit of a letdown all season, and this event is doing nothing to dispel that notion. Tough to say what expectations were for the Bumblebees coming into this season, but this wasn't one of their better efforts. They had their early speed down, but coordination between members was a recurring issue. On the positive side, the O'Rangers managed to become the first team of the 2020 season to get their fourth medal, earning a bronze and pushing themselves to first place in the overall standings. After mediocre finishes all season, we finally have a reason to discuss Team Momo, who put in an excellent team effort to grab the silver. Note how they made efficient use of the gaps. The two lead marbles provided the initial push, with later support coming from the trailers that managed to provide boosts only after the group had a steady grip on the block. But stealing the show were the Midnight Wisps, who wholeheartedly committed themselves to the leave everything on the track strategy. Putting everything into their first heat, the Wisps broke the previous Marble League record by a wide margin. And they did so using an extremely risky maneuver that ultimately paid off. Early on in the run, they managed to knock the block onto the edge of the track in a way that didn't prevent them from pushing it directly down the hill. With the reduced friction, and making use of the slope of the railing, they were able to give it a huge initial kick. Now note how they spaced themselves out all the way down the track before amazingly coming together as a team and simultaneously giving a huge final kick to the block. This really is incredible that they managed to time this so well. The win boosts the team up into a third place tie with the Minty Maniacs in the overall standings. And that's all the news for today. This has been The Marble Report.